Welcome everyone to We Hack Purple Streams. I'm Tanya Janka, your host. And with me today is Ryan Lloyd of GuardSquare. And he's going to talk about mobile application security testing with a free tool called AppSweep. He's going to tell us lots and lots of stuff and I could just read the description to you or I could let Ryan just take over. So Ryan, welcome and thank you so much for being a part of our community. Excellent. All right, thank you so much, Tanya. Um, so I thought I'd start this off and maybe talk a little bit about um, sort of the domain of mobile app security testing uh, and really introduce why we created uh, this free tool called AppSweep. Um, and then we'll go through and demo different aspects of the tool. Um, feel free to reach out with questions at all as we go. Uh, I think the interruption will be welcomed, uh, break up some of the monotony of, of the discussion. Um, so let's start with uh, just a little bit about GuardSquare. Um, so GuardSquare is a company that's focused on mobile app security. Um, little known fact about the company, we were founded uh, originally um, by building an open source tool called ProGuard. Um, it's a tool that was used for optimizing and shrinking mobile applications, Android applications in particular. Uh, it was a really popular tool amongst Android developers. So popular it became the default uh, for optimizing and shrinking in the Android Studio uh, SDKs uh, for some time. Uh, and what we found is when people started to optimize and shrink their app with ProGuard, um, they noticed that it obfuscated some of the names of the different objects in their app in order to shrink them and make them smaller. And uh, some people noticed this and started using ProGuard to try and obfuscate their app for security reasons. Um, and that sort of led into the development of our commercial product called DexGuard, uh, which actually implements many different types of obfuscation uh, and different protection features for reverse engineering and tampering. So company was founded based on an open source tool, quickly grew as we acquired, you know, over 900 customers um, that are securing and protecting their applications. Um, we've got offices in three locations, uh, our headquarters in Belgium, uh, in a small uh, city called Leuven. Uh, we have an office in Munich in Germany and where I'm located here in Boston uh, in the US. Um, so fast growing company, um, but one of the things that we focused on almost two years ago now was kind of building on our open source roots and trying to provide more value to the mobile app uh, development community around the topic of security. Um, we noticed that our solutions for protecting applications against reverse engineering and tampering are, are good, but not everyone really is yet um, understanding the need to protect their app. Um, so we thought, what's the most common uh, security need amongst mobile app developers? And it turned out security testing was high on that list. And that led to us creating this free service called AppSweep, uh, which we'll go into in a little bit more detail. So let's talk about why AppSweep and mobile app security testing is interesting or important. Because um, for a lot of uh, security professionals, you might think, um, you know, mobile apps are pretty low on your list of areas to, to look at and secure. Um, you know, you think a lot about the APIs, you think about containers and infrastructure, think about web applications. But it turns out um, vulnerabilities can exist in mobile applications too. Um, I'll give you some some examples here. Um, the first one is uh, hard-coded keys and credentials. Uh, turns out those can exist in mobile apps as well, often do. Um, there was a report last year. Uh, it was part of the Symantec um, security research team. They did some analysis of publicly available apps in the iOS uh, and Google Play Store, and they found almost 1,900 examples of applications that contained hard-coded AWS credentials. Um, in fact, it was one of those rare instances where um, most of the apps that were affected were iOS apps. Um, and then th uh, about three quarters of those apps contained uh, tokens that gave access to some of the private AWS cloud services. Um, uh, so what that means is people could reverse engineer those mobile apps, identify those hard-coded keys or tokens inside the app, and then use it to exploit and gain access to some of those privileged services. Um, around half of the apps that they identified also contained tokens that gave access to um, the simple storage service that contained 
private information, private data from the app. So it was a source of uh, leaking uh, personal data and private data of users of that app. So this is a good example. You know, you think about the OWASP taxonomy of uh, vulnerabilities, you know, the mobile top 10 and a lot of the derivative research in the mobile application security project. You know, this is a, a good example of insecure uh, authentication, uh, hard-coded keys and credentials uh, being stored in plain text inside, inside your application. Um, another example we came across uh, recently is um, some examples of applications that were using insecure um, configurations of their Firebase database. So Firebase, um, you know, cop company that's quite popular for crash reporting uh, and analytics for your app, but it also su uh, supports a simple database where you can use it to store uh, information um, for your application. And um, it turns out what was happening is that, um, you know, the Firebase database, when you set it up, is secure by default. Um, but what a lot of developers will do when they're building a debug version of their application or while it's in development is they'll relax the permissions and privileges in that database so they can do queries against it and validate everything that well while they're developing but then of course once you release your app to the public app store if you haven't then hardened or secured that database configuration um, those lax privileges and permissions leave that database wide open uh, for inspection and so what you can do is you can download an app from the app store find an example uh, through different static analysis techniques of apps that make calls to the Firebase database service, um, find the endpoint, and then of course, just open your browser and start running queries against those databases. Um, and that's what happened. In this case, there was 14 um, of the top Android apps uh, that had about 140 million installs on users' devices where those Firebase databases were left misconfigured, allowing people to query, uh, and in some cases, update that database uh, directly without any privileges, permissions, or authentication. Um, and it, what was interesting about this article is that kind of wasn't, uh, I was a bit skeptical initially at some of the, the metrics here. Um, so we actually added uh, a new finding to AppSweep to detect uh, instances of a Firebase uh, database um, in the application that could be insecure. Um, and so we had our security research team to go and do some um, research on those examples um, and to see kind of what it looked like. And it, it confirmed exactly what, what the headline uh, showcased, which is that there are plenty of examples of apps in the App Store using the Firebase database with, uh, uh, without properly securing um, the backend. So, um, you know, this was an example where all the analysis was done on Android, but Firebase is a cross-platform tool, so can equally affect uh, iOS as well. Um, third example that um, keeps making uh, the rounds in terms of popularity is a little bit more specific to Android, uh, the Android mobile ecosystem. Um, every year or so, there's new variants of Android malware um, that focuses on exploiting some of the different um, uh, system capabilities um, and permissions in the Android uh, platform in order to gain access to sensitive information um, and to target users of different applications. So at the moment, there's a few different variants of malware that are targeting a lot of popular banking applications, um, particularly in uh, Latin America um, and in Asia, uh, we're seeing a lot of inquiries from our customers around how do they how do they protect their application from being targeted. Um, and what's interesting is there's a few different ways these attacks work. Um, sometimes if you expose your platform intents in Android incorrectly, it can leave your app uh, susceptible to interactions from other apps on the user's device. Um, in some cases, they're um, leveraging some uh, weaknesses in the Android um, platform uh, that go back several Android versions uh, to perform things like overlay attacks, where you can pop up a little message on the screen that overlays the real app. And if you make that pop up look very similar to the, 
the app that you're targeting, the user can be tricked into clicking and, and disclosing sensitive information into um, that overlay. Um, that's something that Google has tried to lock down and put a lot of safeguards in place, but uh, really only helps you if you can prevent users from accessing your app to certain Android versions. Um, and then the more recent example we've seen of this is um, malware that's exploiting accessibility services. So interesting thing about the Android ecosystem is there's a um, accessibility API that third-party apps can have access to uh, if they're granted the permission on a user's device. And it allows uh, you to use third-party apps like screen readers or um, text, uh, voice-to-text input uh, assistant sort of uh, applications. And the main purpose there is, um, you know, Android made this decision to create an open ecosystem, supports all these third-party apps. Uh, and these third-party app developers are trying to create assistive technologies for users with different disabilities, which is good. The bad news is that any app can request access to the accessibility service API. Um, and if a user is tricked into granting a malicious app that permission, then that Malicious app also has the ability to read the screen or provide text input into the screen. And so there's been examples of how this was used to target uh, authenticator apps to screen read to FA keys, uh, capture them, uh, been used to initiate um, payments and transfers in banking applications, uh, and so forth. So improper platform usage or um, things like that can be exploited by uh, malware to also impact the app that you're developing and uh, publishing for your um, for your users of your your service. Um, what's interesting about this last example is that it actually fits the the definition of what I would consider a shared security model, right? So you think about an app on your device, whose responsibility is it to secure the data in that app? Uh, and I would argue there's there's at least three responsible parties that have the, the um, responsibilities in that shared security model. There's the end user of the device, right? Who needs to be educated and be aware of the risks of phishing campaigns and giving permissions to apps on their phone and where they download apps to load onto their device, et cetera. So there's some end user responsibility. There's um, the ecosystem or operating system manufacturer and device manufacturer. So Google, Apple, and the various um, device manufacturers in the Android ecosystem that have a responsibility to create uh, security and trust in the app store yeah. uh, and at the device level. Um, but lastly, it's the app developer, right? So nobody wants to build a massive scale digital app for their customers that contains uh, and interacts with personal data, um, but does so in a way that leaks it or um, provides access to it to malicious parties. So it's uh, it's one of those complex uh, scenarios where everybody has a role role to play. So let's talk, I guess, more about the steps you can take as a as an app developer uh, and really what's um, required there to secure the applications you're you're building. Um, what's good is that there's been a lot of um, contributions over the last several years at growing this sort of community of expertise that's focused on mobile app security. Um, so OWASP has a dedicated project called the Mobile Application Security Project. Um, and there's been some recent uh, revisions to the Mobile Application Security Verification Standard, uh, as well as the Corollary Testing Guide that really lays out a pretty comprehensive set of testing requirements that need to be considered. Um, and detailed test cases and how to assess uh, your application against that standard. Um, the recent efforts by the community to um, really strengthen that project have also been noticed by some industry groups. So there's a group called the App Defense Alliance, uh, sponsored by Google, uh, as well as a few other contributing members. Um, and they're really trying to leverage that mobile application security verification standard to um, assess and provide a little bit more um, uh, visibility to the security state of applications that are in uh, things like 
the Google Play Store. So you'll notice there's a new badge in the Google Play Store uh, where you can get assessed based on uh, some of those standards. Uh, and there's a whole program called the Mobile App Security Assessment, MASA, um, that the App Defense Alliance is promoting, uh, where you can actually enlist a third-party authorized lab to do an assessment against uh, your application, um, do it once a year, and then get that badge in the Google Play Store. So that's the good news. There's some great uh, resources available uh, to understand the domain um, and to build that knowledge in your mobile engineering teams or the security professionals that support those teams um, on some of the nuance and specific requirements of mobile app security testing. Um, from a GuardSquare perspective, uh, we launched uh, a free service that we'll dive into here. Um, almost two years ago. Uh, and one of the things we first did when we launched the service, we surveyed users that signed up for it to understand what their role was um, and how frequently they plan to test their application. Um, so here's some interesting uh, things that we observed. Uh, one, um, we noticed that there's a greater number of developers taking ownership of the security testing of their mobile app uh, than, than perhaps we expected. Um, so by far the biggest population of users of our service is mobile app developers, uh, which is good. Uh, I mean, we built AppSuite to be a developer-friendly tool and to fit into that developer process really well. Um, so that was good to see. Um, the other thing we noticed is that there was a strong desire for people to, to perform that testing um, frequently, either every time they commit uh, or daily. Um, you know, it seemed to very closely map to how frequently they were making changes to their mobile app. So that's what people said they wanted to do when we surveyed them. The question is, what did they actually do when they started using the tool? Um, well, the good news is almost half of the scans we see that use our service are automated. The downside is all that automation is only done by 7% of the users. So there's still a lot of room uh, to go in terms of uh, people automating those scans as part of their CI tool. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more in terms of what's possible as we go through and uh, demo the product in, in some detail. So there's a lot of progress to be made in kind of leveraging automation and getting consistent, repeatable uh, analysis of your mobile app. So let's talk about AppSweep and what we built, and, and then we can go into the product itself. So it's a free uh, app security testing tool. Um, we built it with developers in mind, uh, and we built it specifically for mobile apps. So it's not to be confused with other mobile or other security testing tools that are more general purpose in nature. Uh, ours is quite specifically focused on mobile applications. Uh, and the goal of the tool is to help you fix security issues quickly by providing what we call actionable recommend recommendations. So if we have a finding uh, that we notice in your app, uh, we want to provide some guidance on what it takes to fix it. Um, so it's sort of an education uh, component to the product as well. Um, we focus on really high confidence uh, tests uh, to try and limit um, the occurrence of false positives and things that may be a distraction to developers. And then we made it possible to automate your scans um, so that you can continually uh, execute those scans as part of uh, as part of your CI CD process. So that's kind of enough, I guess, set up and describing why. Uh, we're focused on mobile app security testing. Let's talk a little bit about the product and the experience. Um, maybe just before I showcase the product itself, um, if you go to mas.owasp.org, um, that's where you can find the resources around the mobile application security project, including the MASVS, that's the verification standard, really describes all the requirements and considerations when testing a mobile app. And then there's related resources like the testing guide that details all the testing uh, test cases uh, and a checklist and, and so on. So really good resource. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about how we uh, support that with AppSweep in just a moment. So I talked about how AppSweep is a uh, free um, security testing tool for mobile. So uh, if you are interested in getting started, uh, you can just visit appsweep.guardsquare.com. Uh, you'll be presented with our sign-up page. 
um, a few different ways for you to sign in. We ask for a first name, last name, email address. Uh, you accept the terms uh, and decide whether you want to receive communications from us. Um, or you can conveniently sign in with your GitHub login or your Google uh, sign in, uh, whatever your preference is. Um, once you sign in, uh, and I'll just sign into an account I already have. Once you sign in, uh, you'll be faced with a, a screen that doesn't have any projects within it initially. Uh, and you'll also see a pop-up here um, that gives you a checklist of how you can get started. Uh, describes how to perform your first scan, uh, how to invite users to your project, how to automate your scan, and some resources to learn a little bit about mobile app protection. So a um, couple of questions we routinely get, uh, usually at this stage. Um, one, uh, why is the product free? <laughs> so um, the reasoning why we created this free product is because um, we really want to educate more of the market on the need to secure mobile apps. If we achieve that goal, then our commercial products will thrive and succeed uh, as well. So we see a lot of value in providing this free service as really just a way to open the eyes of mobile app developers who may not be thinking about uh, security uh, in terms of their uh, agenda. Uh, for a lot of developers of mobile apps, they're thinking about getting features out. Um, they're thinking about competition, uh, getting tasks done on their on their board. Uh, and security is not always top of mind. So for us, creating this free service gets more developers engaged with us, thinking about security, and we we benefit as a company when that happens. Um, you know, another question we usually get at that point is, uh, okay, so it's a free service. Uh, what happens to our data? Um, so the interesting thing here is we give users control over the data in the service. Um, and of course, if you have any uh, interest, you can look in our help center here, and we have some help articles here specifically um, dedicated to how does GuardSquare handle your app uh, and personal data. Um, so we provide you all the details you need on how we handle the data, um, how you can share your scan results, um, the fine-grained controls you have to delete data, delete projects, uh, et cetera. Um, related question that we get sometimes is, uh, who else can scan my application? Or how do I make sure no one can scan my application? Um, and the reality is you can't. Um, so the very fact that you publish your mobile application to the Google Play Store or um, the Apple App Store um, means it's publicly available for people to analyze and either um, reverse engineer or put into any number of security testing tools, whether it's AppSweep or uh, another similar service. So um, the focus should probably not be on how do you prevent people from analyzing uh, your application. Um, it should be make sure you analyze and scan your application first so you know what those security concerns and risks are, um, and you can mitigate uh, those ahead of time. So. Um, that's a little bit about kind of the sign-up process uh, and how we think about data and what it means to scan your mobile application using a, a public service. Uh, hey, Ryan. Yes. Um, someone has to leave and they just wanted to say thank you so much and they're gonna watch the rest of the recording. So thank you for joining us, Ed. And Perfect. there are, I just thought I'd let you know, there are no questions in the chat, but I wanted to say verbally and rather not just in the chat, people, you can ask questions if you want to. I mean, Ryan, you're doing a really good job of explaining. So I actually haven't, usually I have questions and I haven't had any questions yet because you're really just very clear. Um, but just so everyone knows, you can ask him questions. He's very nice. Good. Uh, yeah, I tried to anticipate some questions as well. So you'll see me um, introduce some questions as we go. Uh, so, cool. But feel free to jump in. Uh, any questions at all? So we talked about the checklist and getting started. So first thing to do, um, as a user is to create a new project. So a project is just a logical way to organize the application you want to scan. So I'll create one here. Uh, 
Uh, you can optionally give it a description. And you'll see uh, the newly created application will appear uh, at the bottom of the list of applications you have. If we click into it, um, there's currently no results or builds, but we can upload a build. So let me find uh, one that I had earlier. Uh, let me make this a bit smaller. Uh, no, wrong one. Here we go. In full screen mode here, so it's there. We go. Now I can drag and drop to it. Um, so you'll find uh, the app that you want to scan. So here I've got a Android APK. I'll drop it into the upload, and that'll begin the process of uploading it to App Sweep. Um, you can see it's been uploaded successfully, and now the analysis itself is running. Um, typically, we find uh, a scan can take a minute and a half to three minutes. That's generally the time frame uh, for an application to be analyzed. Um, depends a little bit on the size of the application, uh, complexity of it, uh, so forth. So while that's uh, scanning, uh, a few other things to note about the project that we created. Um, one of the things we can do is we can uh, invite some team members to participate in this project. So if we've got other developers or security team members um, in our organization, uh, we'll click on team and we can add a member, uh, enter their email address and send them an invite. Um, there'll always be a main project owner who owns that project and then project members uh, who can be invited to the project. Um, so that'll help you share uh, results um, and have team members who can also upload and scan uh, and participate in the project itself. Some additional settings that we can um, configure uh, for our project. Um, we have some permissions here on who can manage the team. Um, we have a toggle here for advanced analysis. So from time to time, we'll introduce some uh, new findings uh, and new advancements. Uh, so this toggle opts your application into um, those experimental or more advanced types of analysis that we do. Um, so uh, last year, we introduced the concept of data flow analysis, which um, uh, we have this experimental feature. Later this year, we're gonna introduce interactive analysis um, for a more dynamic approach, uh, which will be in this category uh, as well. Um, looks like we got a question from David. Uh, is the app sweep scanning process a SAST, DAST, or hybrid approach? Uh, so that's a good question. Um, the scan uh, that you see right now is uh, a form of static analysis. Um, it's static analysis with some enhanced data flow uh, to trace the data flows through the application. Um, in about uh, the next month, uh, 30 days or so, we have a new release of AppSuite that's coming along that introduces what we call um, sort of an interactive analysis. So you can test the app more dynamically um, for a certain category of findings that just can't be reliably uncovered using static analysis alone. So interactive analysis will allow you to um, instrument your app, run it on a device or emulator, and it will test it dynamically um, to give you a little bit more uh, detailed types of findings that can't be uncovered with, with static analysis. All right, this build is just finishing up. Um, in the meantime, if we go back to my main project list, I've actually got an example uh, from earlier. Uh, I created a similar project uh, just to configure some of the integrations. So once you perform a scan um, or multiple scans, you'll start to get this picture um, that shows the results from build to build. So that can be pretty useful for seeing 
where there's any sort of deviation in findings uh, from one build to another and what's changed most recently. And then you'll get the list of uh, specific builds here that you can click into. And that's where we'll get the main um, interesting view um, of the results of the analysis. So here's a version of this app that I scanned earlier. Um, and first thing you'll notice is um, really the findings uh, cards that we group by severity. Um, so those are really just convenient filters for you to be able to quickly identify uh, the high severity, medium, or low severity issues uh, that are found in your application. Um, we will also identify dependencies uh, in your application, um, and we will perform the analysis against those dependencies uh, also. Um, so you can filter to just see uh, the findings that relate to those dependencies. We talked about uh, OWASP. Um, so we've got this convenient card here as well uh, that groups the findings based on um, the different levels in the mobile application security verification standard. Um, so there's different levels. Uh, and so we've kind of conveniently grouped uh, those findings based on that. You can drill down into it, um, see those findings. And we also group them by the uh, category in the um, security verification standard. So you can quickly identify uh, those findings based on the MASVS uh, category, which is quite, quite helpful. And then if we scroll down, we get to the actual findings list itself, uh, either in its unfiltered state, or you can filter it by various different um, categories. Um, you can find um, you know, findings that are just in your first party code versus findings that are found in dependencies, um, severity, um, category of issue, et cetera. Um, question here about the dependencies. Does the tool check if the versions included have known vulnerabilities? Um, the answer is no. So what we will do is identify the vulnerabilities we've found in the app itself and whether that exists in the dependencies or the first party code, but it is not performing um, a sort of software composition analysis uh, scan to determine if there's known vulnerabilities in those dependencies. Um, that's something we'd still want to leverage one of the many tools that are out there uh, for that, you know, like the GitHub Dependabot or Sneak or whatever the appropriate SCA tool is that, that you leverage. Um, and usually you can plug that right into your code repo to give you that analysis uh, as well. Great question. Um, so let's, uh, Let's move on a little bit further here. Um, so let's review one of these findings uh, so we can see an example of what it looks like. Um, here's perhaps a good one. Um, let's check out this TLS certificate chain issue. So here's an example where um, a specific uh, class isn't checking the TLS certificate chain correctly. So we try and provide a fairly explicit description of the issue. Um, in this case, we even provide a little video that describes a little bit uh, about the issue. We'll provide a reference to the area of the code where this issue exists, um, if, if relevant, if possible. Um, and then we'll provide some uh, recommendations here on how to fix it and links to some additional resources um, that help uh, perhaps provide some education on this type of finding or issue. Um, so those are the main ways that you can leverage these, these findings. The other thing to highlight here is, um, let's say you've done this scan and you want to share the results with different team members. Um, there's a few ways to do that. Uh, you can invite people to participate in your project. Um, that's useful if you've got team members who will routinely want to track and be notified when there's a new scan of this project. But a couple of other um, ways you can share the results. Um, there's a sharing link here on your build. And there you can share the build 
using a unique uh, link. Uh, the default configuration of these private sharing links, it's kind of like Google Docs. Um, they're only visible to uh, people who are members of the project by default, but you can open it up so that anyone with this link uh, can view this build page um, publicly. Um, that can be useful if you just want to share it to someone who doesn't have access to AppSweep, has never used it, um, and doesn't plan to use it uh, frequently. Um, you know, the UID here is randomly generated, um, so sharing it um, to known individuals is uh, quite okay. Um, but we do provide those controls on those sharing mechanisms, and it's not shared publicly by default. Um, conveniently, there's also a download button where you can get a PDF version uh, of these findings in a findings report. If you click that link, it'll email you a PDF version uh, that you can use to share uh, around uh, your team or to other stakeholders if relevant, or maybe just to put it uh, on record as part of your um, uh, standard operating procedures uh, with release builds. Um, some metadata here that's captured. Uh, I'll explain what some of this is. So um, we'll describe when um, that build was scanned, the version uh, of your app, um, and a bit of metadata on the composition of the app, its size, um, what kind of code was found in the app. Um, you'll see this obfuscation mapping file support. So if you're using a tool to obfuscate your code, um, you can also optionally upload that mapping file, either automatically as part of our Gradle plugin um, uh, or, or using our API. And that can be really useful because if you've obfuscated your code, uh, the analysis won't be able to do accurate um, code snippets and um, data flow analysis necessarily unless it has access to that mapping file. And then tagging support if you need to tag a build uh, for any reason. Sometimes that can be useful to tag uh, a build as being a debug build versus a release build or uh, vice versa. And those tags will appear on the build chart. So if I mark this one as debug, for example, and then we go back to the project, um, those tags uh, will be made visible uh, and accessible from the main build page here as well. Um, so you can quickly identify those builds based on, on their tag. Um, there's a compare feature as well. If you want to compare um, the results of two builds side by side to see which, um, which findings are new or different, uh, can be useful if you want to see specifically what, what changed between two builds. So those are some of the, I guess, basic uh, capabilities of App Sweep. Um, maybe if we move on to automation, um, automation is sort of the next more advanced feature. Um, so if we go back to our settings, um, two things to be aware of for automation. Um, first is the concept of an API key. So the project itself uh, has associated with it um, any number of API keys you can create uh, or revoke, and that can be used for automating uh, scans. For Android applications, the most common way to automate your scans is to use our Gradle plugin. Uh, Gradle is just the default build tool used in building Android applications in Android Studio and, and in different CI tools. So the easiest way to automate your scan is often to simply um, add the app sweep uh, Gradle plugin to your Gradle uh, build file, um, configure an API key, and then set the API key in your um, system variables or environment variables. And that'll make sure that every time you do a Gradle build with the upload to app sweep task, um, that it'll upload a version of the app automatically with dependency information and uh, your obfuscation mapping files. And, and things, everything that maximizes the success of those scans. In addition to the Gradle plugin, we also have um, a, a GitHub integration. Um, you can find it in the GitHub marketplace and install it uh, into your GitHub profile. 
and then you can select the GitHub repo this application is derived from. And I'll show you some screenshots of what that looks like. Um, the benefit of it is, uh, here's a blog post we did that describes how to set it up. Um, first thing is to just configure your Gradle plugin. Um, set up your AppSweep API key. Uh, you can set that up as a GitHub secret on your repository. And then you can automate the scanning process using a GitHub action on your workflow so that every time you submit a pull request, it's going to invoke the Gradle task for uh, the AppSweep build. And then install the AppSweep app on your GitHub account. Uh, link it to your repository. And by doing that, then every time you do a pull request um, and that GitHub action is invoked, uh, it's going to annotate that pull request with a link to the app sweep scan and build uh, that have passed. So that way, if you're in GitHub, uh, you can go to your pull requests, you find one that was closed earlier, uh, and you can quickly uh, navigate to see any checks uh, that were performed um, and annotate annotate that with details about the uh, the app sweep scan that was performed. So it can be a useful uh, way to get that uh, contextual information directly in your GitHub pull request for others to see. Um, So that's the uh, GitHub integration. Um, there's various other CI CD tools that you can use um, with the same sort of integration pattern. Uh, we published an example to the Bitrise uh, App Store as well. If you use Bitrise to automate your mobile app scans uh, or mobile app builds. Um, so by doing uh, the configuration in Bitrise with our plugin, you can automatically invoke App Sweep as part of Bitrise. And we've got blog posts for Jenkins uh, and others as well. But essentially, by calling our Gradle plugin, um, pretty much any CI CD tool can be used uh, in that way. So that's the uh, automation uh, aspects. Uh, again, the main benefit of automating your scans is you can uh, just get it so that you're getting a scan with every build and you can really trend and, and see how those security findings look over time uh, and quickly identify when there's a regression or an issue that needs to be um, looked at more closely. So let's um, maybe cover one last topic and then we'll talk a little bit about where we're going next uh, with AppSweep as a free service. So. Um, one area we didn't cover is, I guess, some of the more specific details on findings. Um, so let me find a relevant finding here. Um, let's look at this one here. So uh, one of the things that we do with findings is we uh, provide these convenient mechanisms for you to um, suppress a finding. Uh, or provide feedback on a finding. So in some cases, you may find um, the finding might be relevant, but perhaps you've mitigated the risk of this finding through some other means for your application. And so it's a finding that you don't need to fix. Um, so you can click suppress this finding. Uh, you can choose an option for why you want to suppress this finding and then confirm. And now this finding uh, will no longer appear uh, for that build. Uh, and if you do a subsequent scan of your application, uh, that same finding will also be suppressed. So those suppressions are maintained at the project level. Um, so if we go back to our project settings, um, here you'll have a list of any uh, types of findings that have been suppressed for this project. Um, so that's one of the more advanced features, uh, really helps you fine tune. Um, so you're not constantly having to uh, interpret or deal with a finding that you know uh, there's no need to fix. The other uh, aspect related to our findings is that from time to time, 
Uh, you may have some feedback on one of our findings. Um, you know, for example, one of the things we noticed early on was that um, we were detecting hard-coded keys and credentials in apps. And one of the most popular um, uh, API keys we would see um, in clear text inside apps is the Google Maps API key, for example, or different Google uh, services API keys. Um, and so we would flag that as a finding. And one of the things that users of AppSoup were doing was they were providing us feedback. Um, feedback allows you to describe um, an issue and just give us feedback on the quality of that finding. Um, and what we learned is that Google actually um, allows you to implement their API keys in the clear inside an app. It assumes uh, that that's going to happen. Uh, and they provide some server side recommendations and controls uh, on uh, how to ensure that there isn't abuse uh, of that API key. So we refined our finding based on some of the feedback that the users had provided. So in addition to suppressing findings, uh, you may also find it useful to share feedback uh, with the team that created AppSweep um, so we can constantly fine tune and improve the service for you and, and for others. Um, brings me maybe to the last point here on uh, feedback. Um, you can also reach out to us at any point in time. Uh, you can send us a message. Uh, and the development team that built AppSweep uh, sits on the other end of this chat and uh, will provide um, answers to your questions, guide you to tips, tricks, um, anything else that uh, you need help with. So um, feel free to message us at any time. Uh, things that we get asked routinely, we also convert into these uh, help articles, you know, how to use Gradle. Um, how to activate advanced analysis, the role of OWASP, how we handle data, et cetera. So a great way to kind of help discover the capabilities of uh, the tool. All right, so those are the main capabilities of AppSweep. Um, if we think about roadmap and where we're going with the service, um, we're committed to maintaining this as a free tool. Um, there may come a day where we introduce a paid version of the tool, um, but that would mostly be if we find organizations need um, some complex enterprise features in the future. Uh, like maybe they need custom identity providers and single sign-on support. Those would be good examples of where we may need to create a, a, a business or enterprise plan that isn't free. But the core use of the tool we want to keep free um, to really help encourage and build the security awareness in the mobile app development community. Um, AppSoup today supports Android applications, um, app bundles, APKs, um, uh, libraries. Um, we are currently working on adding iOS support as well. So you'll notice my demo was very Android focused today. Um, but in the coming months, we will be introducing uh, support for iOS. Uh, as well. So you'll be able to upload your IPA or XC archive uh, for analysis as well. And then the other major feature on our roadmap is what we call interactive uh, analysis. So the process there will be that once you upload your app and we do that uh, static scan and create this build, you'll see a new prompt when you're reviewing the details that allows you to download an instrumented version of your app to your local device or on an emulator. Um, and there you can actually test and explore your app uh, in real time. And that will uh, trigger a more dynamic uh, type of analysis uh, of your application, which just helps us uncover more sophisticated findings that can't be detected strictly through static analysis. Um, also helps maybe weed out some things that are uh, uh, difficult to verify with static analysis alone. Um, so those are two big major features coming um, over the next couple of months to try and bring a little bit more uh, capability to AppSweep. Um, as you explore AppSweep, you can always find more information here in what's new. Uh, whenever we do a release, we update the release notes here with um, descriptions of new findings or new features uh, that we have launched.
So stay tuned there for any new updates on what we provide. Ryan, I love that you answered all the questions that the audience would probably ask on your own. You're like, everyone always asks this. I'm just going to tell them everything. Yes. Yeah, we've done a few of these, these demos before, so we kind of know what, uh, what questions people, people focus on. I also really liked how you differentiated between, so we'll make a paid version, but only if we get enterprise style requests. And then you gave actual examples because SSO it's, and things like that, like that takes such a huge amount of effort to implement. It's so much work to create it and support that sort of functionality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think as we get more of those kind of sophisticated use cases from from users where they want to invite their whole team and organization, maybe that'll make sense. But for now, you get your team in there using it, um, and we'll always keep the fundamental analysis free free to use. Um, Lizzy has a comment. What you showed and what's coming sounds really great. I'm eager to check it out for myself. I, I agree, actually, this is really cool. I also, most open source tools, you're just allowed one user, you're not allowed a team. And so you have your whole team logging in as this one user and you don't know who did what. It's rare that you're allowed more than one user. So that's really generous. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's it's beneficial for everyone in the team to have that context and that, that access. Um, yeah, super important. Um, and Lizzy, you mentioned you were from Munich. Uh, we will have some of our team from Munich going to DroidCon Berlin uh, that's coming up. So it's a big Android event in Berlin where they'll be doing some talks and some demos uh, of AppSweep. We'll have a small booth there set up as well. So if you happen to be interested in going deeper um, and you're involved in the Android community, it could be a good, good event to go to. Awesome. Um does anyone else have any questions for Ryan? I mean, he answered all my questions before I asked them. So <laughs> if there are no questions, that's okay. Ryan, this has been great. Is there a place where people could learn more or follow more about this product or you? Uh, yes. So um, yeah, to experience AppSweep itself, uh, you can visit appsweep.guardsquare.com. That's the simplest way to get to our sign up page uh, where you can sign up. Uh, and access the free service. Um, if you're interested in mobile app security generally, uh, we have a blog on our website that talks about different um, relevant uh, security topics. Uh, let me just pull it up here, guardsquare.com slash blog. Um, there you'll find lots of interesting technical articles uh, on everything from security testing, to uh, different mobile app threats, um, uh, et cetera. So good resource too, if uh, if you're interested. Is there a newsletter? Because some of us like to just receive when the new blogs are up. Do you have a newsletter? Yes, if you click on any one of our blogs uh, and as you scroll down, uh, eventually it'll prompt you if you wish to sign up for a newsletter. Uh, oh, okay. Cool. Uh, you can also oh, see it go. at the bottom and subscribe. Nice. Uh, and then you'll get notified anytime there's a new update uh, to our blog. Nice. Thank you. This is great. Um, do you have LinkedIn or any social media where people could follow you, Ryan? Uh, yep. You can find me on LinkedIn. I'm less uh, busy on other types of social media these days. But uh, yeah, feel free to reach out over LinkedIn if you have questions or follow up or you want to just chat about mobile app security generally. Nice. Okay, awesome. Um, I like those answered all of my questions. And if you are watching this later, not live, if you go down into the description, you will see the links to things he has talked about so that you can go to them and you don't have to try to spell them out from like the little tiny thing on the screen, just so you know. Um, and yeah, I'm good. Thank you so much, Ryan. This has been really great. And you're perfectly on time. So thank you for that too. Because sometimes people have way more content than one hour will allow for. So I really appreciate you being basically perfectly on time. That's impressive. Just like we planned it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you everyone for showing up. We really appreciate you being here. Um, thank you. 
Ryan and all of the Guard, uh, Guard Square people for participating in a We Have Purple stream. We really appreciate it. And unless there's anything else, this is your last chance. Me and Ryan are going to leave. <laughs> oh. All right. Thank you. Thanks so much, everybody. Okay. Bye, everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful day.